We're doing a birthday celebration for Steven. So we've got all the friends and family together and we're gonna write him messages in balloons. And we're obviously gonna have helium and send them up to him. And then we're going back to the family's house and having a little birthday celebration for him. I think this is a better way to celebrate it. Get everyone together and do something happy and remember him the way he would want to be remembered. I still think about him every day and I still wear his cross and his Live Strong bracelets and everything. So he's always the number one thing on my mind every day. Because in 23 years he affected a lot of people. A lot of people. It, none of us can figure out why this happened. I mean, everything was going great in his life. He had a great girlfriend he'd been with for two years, two and a half years. They had a new apartment. He was just got in working for the union. I mean, everything was going great. And he was clean for two years. Too. There was really, I mean, there was absolutely no reason for him to do what he did, except the, simply the drug calling him, and he just couldn't fight it off. When we met in high school, we were together for like six years off and on, and um, our addiction pretty much took off the whole six years. Yeah, it got pretty bad towards the end, and um, like we split up probably in 05, and that's when um, I was able to get clean, and he was able to get clean because we couldn't get clean together. And um, I was able to get some recovery, and he was too. And we still talked about like how, like the old times, and like how much we changed, and like how much our lives like gotten better. But we we still talked like even up until the day they passed away. They were heroin, and they just you know they think of what it was like when we were growing up. You know, when we were kids, and somebody was doing heroin, it was somebody who you know they were your typical stereotype junkie on the street. These kids that are hooked on heroin now are honor roll students and captain of varsity hockey teams and cheerleaders and, and they're in college. They're, they're holding a job and going to school and nobody has any idea what they're going through until they finally get to a point where they just can't take it anymore. They know they can't beat it and they ask someone for help. Like I share like the story about Steve like hoping that like someone who hear that will get like one more day. I mean, that's what these kids need to understand, any of them that are out there, and any of them that are using, injecting this into their body. They need to understand that they're high risk for an overdose if you've been clean. You know, I mean, we don't want them to get high. But if you're going to, don't do it alone, because you're at a high risk for an overdose, and if there's nobody there to help you, you're going to be gone. And then it's going to be another family going through what my family's going through. And I wouldn't wish this on anyone, anyone. It, it's devastating. I mean, it's like it, it's like when a person has an amputation of a limb. You know, it's gone forever. You, you, there's nothing you can do about it. It's out of your control, and, and you can't get it back. He could have been reaching out that day. I don't know. Like he wanted me to call him, and um, like I regret it now. Like I didn't call him that day. You know, I mean, when he was in trouble, having a bad day, he'd call, and by the time we would hang up the phone, you know, he'd say, "Ma," he says, "I'm." Maybe I want to get high, he says, but I know I won't. He said, I promise I'm not going to get high. And I always knew when I hung up that phone that he wasn't going to get high that day. You know, and it's just, that was the big question was why didn't he call me? You know, why didn't he call Maddie? You know, or one of his other friends that he could talk to. He said he didn't, he didn't call anybody, you know? I mean, ironically, when they found him, his cell phone was in his hand, but he realized he was in trouble too late. Mm -hmm. um, it never goes away, that's for sure. You're never safe. Obviously, things get better eventually, but it's important to stay within your network and don't ever lose track of your recovery because it never goes away, ever. And it really hurts when you lose that person and you leave a lot of people behind that love you.